Hi everyone, welcome back. I have been using this Zero Breeze for a while now. Uh, you just watched the unboxing and my talk about it and all the details. I won't give you any more details about it. But I've had it for a while and I've been using it. Now I'm going to give you my final thoughts on it. And uh, just to spare you the, a lot of, a lot of uh, information, the bottom line is I'm not keeping it and I don't really recommend it. Uh, the main reason is the ratio of cold to size. So if you're in a car, look how big this thing is. Now they, they don't show you this thing all hooked up, but you really do need all these tubes on here. And with them on, uh, it's really big and takes up a lot of space. So if you're in a car, this is out of the question. Uh, if you're in a van, it still takes up a lot of space. I'm in my ambulance, as uh, probably most of you follow me any length of time. I live in an ambulance. Well, I have a uh, seven and a half foot wide by 12 foot long space. So I have a pretty good amount of space. And this is more space than I'm willing to give to it. Uh, so it's first, the th first thing that I see as a big knock against it is its size. And this part really wants to be screwed on. You can you might could take it off and on without screwing it every time, but it didn't look like it to me. And you really do need this. See, this comes out wherever, you can put this wherever you want it, and then you can set where you're at and aim it at you. And this is, this is real handy. This is what I always did. I found a place to put the zero breeze and then blew, aimed this at me. This works well. You can even set the zero breeze outside and, and if you're in a tent, say, and have this just blowing inside the tent. That You could do that. Uh, so, but I see this is pretty essential. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be without it. Uh, and so, uh, that, this is going to be on here. Now this does just pop off. So you can see this does just pop off and you can go and stow this separately. And you don't have to use this. Uh, one is an intake and one is an exit. It blows out hot air. Well, it's, this is a compressor. Uh, it's a 24 volt compressor and it compresses the air that comes in, it compresses it that, and the, the Freon and I don't, I don't understand it all and I'm not trying to explain it to you. But the bottom line is hot air comes in, it, it cools it, pumps it out and then hot air blows out. So you really have to be able to uh, hook these up outside because otherwise what's happening? You don't pump it outside, you could, again, you could just leave it like this keep your cold air, hot air coming inside to your, your car, your tent, or wherever you are in my ambulance. But if you don't, then you're just squeezing the heat out of the air and putting it back into the air. You've accomplished nothing except burn a whole bunch of electricity. So you really have to have this on here. And um, this works well, but uh, it's much bigger than it, than it looks. And uh, you've got to have a lot of space before this is doing you really any good at all. Let me get these out of the way. It takes up quite a bit of space. Well, that might be worth it if it puts out enough cold air. So how much cold air does this put out? And the answer is not much. <laughs> it, it really is not. First off, it only cools down 30 degrees outside of ambient temperature. That's all the compressor can accomplish. So if it's 100 degrees, and it'll cool it down to 70. And there's inside here, and you'll see pictures, there's a thermometer in there, and it shows the temperature of the air coming out. And it was not, it was never really hot where I was when I tested this. So it was like 90. And so if, if it was 89, I would have a uh, 59 degree temperature cold air coming out. And that was very comfortable. That felt very good. So I set this somewhere near me plugged, ran those around, and I found, had a, found a place in my ambulance where I could actually vent them outside. So I was drawing outside air in, which was at least uh, 80, 90 degrees, 90 degrees or more, and, uh, and the hot air was going out, so it was working properly. And so then I extended this all the way out, like I said, and I had it just aimed over at, at me. And it felt good. It felt really good. 59 degree air on a hot day feels really good. Now, if it's 100 and it's up to 70, it's not going to feel nearly as good. But understand, you can't cool a space. This will not cool a space. They tell you that over and over again uh, in every all their advertising and all their literature. This won't cool a space. If you expect it to, you're gonna, it's going to fail. You'll be very disappointed with it. So wherever I sat, if I had it like pointed at me like this, now it's pretty comfortable. 
it, it, you know, because you have a cold air hitting you in the central body area, and that was comfortable. But if I moved away from it, it was maybe five degrees cooler. Instead of being 90 degrees inside the ambulance, it might have been 85. It, it cannot cool a space. You cannot have that idea. So you can see it's uh, just sitting over here on a chair. That's, a, that's my chair right there. And it's just sitting on there. I tried to get it level. They say that, that it's supposed to be level. And the hoses go through to the front in the cab. And they come back out. And then I have the front hose turned and twisted over. This is where I sat and work. So it's blowing right on me. And it's big. It really is surprisingly big. Once the hoses are attached, um, the, the power draw is high and the size in here is big. I'm actually kind of surprised how the length of it is a big problem once the hoses are attached. So I think that might be the one re uh, a reason alone why I would not keep it. I don't know that yet, but I'm pretty sure that would probably be true. A little after five, probably 5.15 by now. Uh, and the air that it's putting out is 55 degrees. It was 86 degrees in the cab. That makes perfect sense. It's dropped at 30 degrees. It's very cool air. It feels great. It's blasting on me and it's doing a really good job of keeping me cool. Uh, so here we are, it's a little after seven, it's probably 7.15. Uh, we're down to 41%, so in four hours we went from 82% to 41%, 10% an hour, that's a significant drop. It would run this battery down, uh, and this is a, the AC300P is a 3,000 watt hour battery. It would run it down from full to 80% in eight hours, so that is not good. And then they'd have to refill it the next day. That's a lot of power. I'm not sure that's going to be viable. The first problem is that it's, it's too large for most rigs, but not large enough to cool most rigs. So right off the bat, that's, that, that's kind of a, a non-starter. But it also draws a lot of power not to be able to cool it very much. So for example, this thing draws about 250 watts, but uh, it's running off of... 110 volt. So this is the charger. Uh, this is what you plug into the wall. This is a 24 volt unit and it plugs into 110 volt and it so it ste this steps it down from 110 to 24. But you, this is hooked up to your inverter and your inverter is hooked up to a 12 volt battery. And so the inverter wastes at least 10% of its power being on and probably quite a bit more. So at three, it's, my experience was that it drew 300 watts an hour. 300 watts divided by 12 gives you 25 amps an hour. So let's just say you have a 100, 100 uh, amp hour battery, which probably the majority of you have a single 100 amp hour battery, either AGM or lithium. So if you run this for two hours, you've drawn 50 amps. You've taken down half your battery to run this for two hours. And and you're done. If you have an AGM battery, then you're done. You've, you've used your whole 50%. That's all you get. If you have a lithium, you can go another hour. You can go three hours because that will bring you down to 75 amps. And uh, you can only go down to 80, and so you'd want to stop about there. You don't want to push it all the way down to 80%, 80 only 20% left. So this is a power hog, a huge power hog, 25 amps an hour. Let's say you have double that. You have more than most. You have two 100 amp hour batteries. That means if you run it for four hours, you've used 100. You've used, uh, if you're AGMs, well, you still use it all because you got 50 and 50, you've used the whole 100. If you're using lithium, well, you started with 160 because each battery can go down to 80%, which is 80 and 80 is 160 if you have two lithiums. Uh, but you, if you run this for four hours, you've used 100. And so that would only just leave you enough for everything else you're using during the day. You probably have a refrigerator going. If your fr fridge is going, it's drawing a lot of power because it's hot, right? You're only running this if it's hot, and that means your fridge is running a lot because it's hot. If it's 100 degrees, and this isn't cooling the space around your fridge, it's just cooling you. You're, basically, it's cooling your chest area 
because you have this space aimed right at you, uh, then your fridge is going to be on a lot at 100 degrees because it's cooling it down to 33, 35, 40, something like that, whatever you have it set at. Uh, if you're running a freezer, my goodness, it will be running nonstop. If you have a freezer, it will probably just run uh, two-thirds of the time, uh, at least, maybe more. The bottom line is you'd have to have an enormous power system at 100 degrees to run this and a fridge. And uh, it, the space it takes up and the amount of cool air that it gives and what it demands in power doesn't add up. It doesn't add up for me at all. And so I'm not recommending this to anyone. If you have a big system and a big space, you're much better off to buy a, a freestanding portable. You'll still have the hoses that go out because ACs need that. You've got to pump that hot air out of the rig. You can't keep it inside. But it'll be putting out eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 BTUs. This is putting out 2,300 BTUs. It'll probably draw double the power. But you'll get five times the cold and you can cool the whole area and your refrigerator will work less hard and your freezer and you will be much more comfortable. So if you're going to invest in, uh, in an AC, or at least at minimum a window unit, because a window unit will put out 5,000 BTUs, double this, and it will be vented outside, and so you and it won't be it won't be as huge. It'll be mounted into a window somewhere. A lot of people put them on their back windows of their vans, so that would work much better. And you can buy those for about five hundred dollars. Again, this is fifteen hundred dollars, and to get a third of the cooling that you're going to get out of any of these other units that are five hundred dollars, it you get something for the power draw you're putting out. The, the math just doesn't add up on this. It's too big. Puts out too little cold air and draws uh, way too much power for what you're getting. So let me show you what I think you should do instead. Just a cheap fan. This is $30, $40. It's not $1,500. It's easy to stow away. It's got a clamp here at the bottom. You can put that on almost anything and it'll just stand. It, this is a stand and a clamp and it runs on USB and it works really, really well. And it's got its own built-in battery, and, but I would, you just plug it into any USB, that's how it charges, uh, or, or a battery bank, and then you can carry it around with you. You can go sit outside and have a fan going on you. And a $3 bottle <laughs> full of free water, or cheap water, if not, and a towel. So you spray your towel, or you just dump your towel. You, you, put your towel around your neck and you put the fan blowing on you and I I gotta tell you this is going to keep you every bit as cool as this thing will and it doesn't cost fifteen hundred dollars and doesn't take up this huge amount of space and draw all the electricity you've got and you just you just spray yourself down and you know normally if it's hot I'll go outside and I'm alone and I'll take my shirt off and I never would take my shirt off otherwise people will be dropping like flies but uh, I'll go outside and sit outside and spray myself and have a fan setting here beside me. And I'll be cooler than this. I will be just as cool as this. And this is, you know, this is 50 bucks at the most. Uh, this is three. The water is a quarter for a gallon. I think you'd be every bit as well off. Uh, get all your ventilation. And I'm going to put out a video here real shortly with all, every, all my tips on staying cool. So all that to say, here's the bottom line. Don't spend 1500 bucks on this. Now the Zero Breeze is 1000 the battery is 500 the two together, uh, actually I think it's more together, they're 1500 um, It just doesn't add up to me. The size is too big, too much little cold coming out, way too much power draw. And so uh, it's a no-go for me. I don't recommend that you buy this. Uh, a far better setup would be to buy a Honda, a Honda 1000 clone and, and a portable unit that you can put in the corner or a window unit that you can put in a window, uh, you, that's going to serve you much better than this would, and that would cost you less. The window unit will be, I don't know, three dollars $400. Uh, Honda clones, $500. Uh, yeah, you got to change oil and, and uh, buy gas and carry gas. Bad things, but I still would do that. Now, if you've got about 750 watts of solar on your roof, you can run a window, a the very smallest window AC, a few hours a day. And you'll still get more cold because it puts out a lot more, it put out twice as much cold air as this will. 
and so if you're insulated and you're putting out some cold air, you could maybe get by with just that. To really run air conditioning, you need a minimum, I think, of 1,000 and 1,200 watts of solar will be comfortable. Uh, you, can, you can be comfortable with 1,200 watts of solar on your roof uh, to run a, a small air conditioning unit. You'd be pretty happy with that. Uh, and I still think that might be less than the 1,500 for this. I just can't give this a recommendation for anybody. If you're in a small unit, it's too big. If you're in a big unit, it's too small. It won't cool enough. Uh, unless you've got a huge amount of solar, you're not going to have solar. This needs a minimum of 700 watts of solar, as far as I'm concerned, to run this and everything else you might want to run. So uh, I'd like to know what you're doing to stay cool this summer when the heat comes on. Uh, what do you do? Would this work for you? Are you seeing a way this would work better for you than it would work for me? Uh, just go ahead and let me know. Leave a comment down below. Our shared experience is so much more valuable than anything I could say. Uh, put the, all of our minds together and we can come up with much better ideas. So, so I want to hear from you and your comments. Well, if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.